Good morning. Call me in order. This meeting was properly posted Friday, June 23rd, 2017. Item 3 is discussion and possible options to approve the minutes of the regular meeting on 5-22-17 and the regular meeting on 6-12-17. Um, yeah, or well, just a question. Uh, Matthew, on the 522, down there is the last motion by Blau, second by Davidson to receive the report. Do we know what report that was? <laughs> no, but I'll go back and be more specific. Okay. I'll find out and put it in there. All right. So do you want to wait on these until he makes that change or just approve them pending? Approve them pending. Okay, so motion to approve pending. Pending the uh, amendment to clarify what the report was. Okay, the motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then on 6-12 minutes, mm -hmm. it shows that I was present. Uh, I was not here. So I believe only Miles and Randy were present. Cody said it. Already. Yeah, Cody, Cody sat here and didn't participate. Yeah. So Miles, I don't know what you want to have. Any that change motion to approve? <laughs> I wasn't here, so I um, I haven't reduced the tape. I think we're good. Okay, then I'll second his motion on these, uh, ending the, the motor change. Uh, motion second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, item number four is discussion of the impossible action regarding update from staff on the capital project specific statistics district number two. Uh, item A is the annex roof replacement. No changes. Okay, item B is annex elevators. Uh, annex elevator, nothing specific with it, but we do have a traffic study uh, that's beginning with code NAY, met with Randy Bunner, who has given us a list of questions to help him determine what will best uh, facilitate the movement of people more rapidly in both the annex and the courthouse. Okay. Item C is the Annex uh, New Front Entrance Security. No changes. Okay. Item D is the Annex uh, Exterior Maintenance and Lighting. The lighting is uh, We're waiting on the controllers so that we can change lights to reflect the view. And the exterior maintenance is on the street. When is the bit of uh, are we up in bed only? All right. So with the lighting, can you see the new is brought to our attention? What's wrong? What are we going to do? Well, when the guys did the exterior maintenance, they'll have uh, lists and stuff when we get up there and lunch. See what's really what's going on. You have a you know, I don't know that you want to go, but the pictures of the website when it's lit up at night, it shows a bunch of those, what do you call those panels that are kind of popped out. Yeah. All right. And you'll be addressing that in the maintenance, is that what? I we'll think. be learning about. Learning about it. <laughs> okay. All right, anything else? Not on that item. I have E at ninth floor demolition. That is the courthouse. I understand there's an interesting story from last night. Yeah, if you wondered whether that was happening or not, it just read me as line nine. Mm -hmm. I believe we had a five alarm response last night. Okay. Progress. Anything else? As best this AB is completely taken care of, just had a change order, capping some of the pipes, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we, we may have some additional bits and pieces of asbestos when they begin to move into the, uh, the chases, plumbing chases themselves. The fixtures, <coughs> as of this morning, have all been removed, all the plumbing fixtures, the toilets, urinals, and those kinds of things. 
so when they move into the traces, there may be some isolated bits and pieces of asbestos that need to be addressed. Anything else? Moving, moving good right now. <coughs> Uh, I would assume there's nothing on F, which is the ninth floor repurpose, since we're still premature. Uh, the DA on Sold has a potential floor plan to explore, so we'll be doing that shortly to finalize, I think, what they want. Item G, the jail lower roof. Uh, progressing very well. We're beyond 50%. We actually made a progressive estimate to the contractor. Item H, jail fire notification. We actually have some positive news there. Simplex <coughs> um, Grinnell has agreed that they will green tag the system. Once they test um, a few devices that weren't previously working in the last inspection, but the areas in the kitchen that they were holding out on, since they were previously tested and they worked, they will um, consider those working and so probably in the next couple of weeks I think they will um, they will bring that the system and we'll be good and I'll let the Department of Labor know and we'll be good. Hopefully we get to take that one off the list. All right, so that concludes item four <coughs> updates on A to H, is there a motion to receive? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item F, well actually can we do this? Uh, F, item 5, I'm sorry, appears to be kind of a catch-all related to mold at the jail. If we could, could we go ahead and skip down to item number 7, which is discussion of and possible action. Uh, regarding the air quality study at the Oklahoma County <coughs> Jail, when Dan asked it to be put on. Um, we received reports back from the company that did the air quality testing, the airborne testing, <coughs> excuse me, recently uh, in a number of locations. And, and Don can, can speak to that probably a little better than I can with specifics. Um, but, the, but the basic is, um, the air quality testing that was done showed minimal minimal uh, airborne mold. Um, the air outside the jail is much worse than the air inside the jail in the areas that we tested. And, uh, I don't know if you want to expand on that. Anyway. I <coughs> correct on the day of the testing was done, uh, June seventh. Multiple areas in the jail were tested um, for airborne spores, and in all areas, the, the tests showed that the, the counts were higher outside than inside. So, as of right now, the mold in the jail is not particularly airborne. Questions? Anyone in the audience have questions? One, one thing is the report um, that's attached electronically, I don't believe included one area. Did, Matthew, did, did you attach both those reports that I sent you? Okay. <coughs> all right. Then, then that covers it all. Motion to accept. I got the general report. Any documents? Yes, sir. I'm going to base on one that on that pass. Mm -hmm. On one of the pages towards the conclusion of the results, it says that uh, all those counts below. It goes on to say that environmental conditions, temperature, moisture, airflow, humidity, mm -hmm. everything outside the jail can change and trigger a release. Correct. Even though that they were allowed to kind of Do you mind just? I'm sorry. Do you mind to just identify yourself so Matthew can get you down as present and addressing <coughs> the committee, please? Curtis Whittington, W H I T T A N G T O N. And you're 
position within the jail? I'm a sergeant, fire safety sergeant. Ah, that's why I know the name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And do you guys have your your own maintenance staff at the jail that I assume is partially responsible for helping to control? Right. So there is a maintenance staff at the jail. As far as the uh, air HVAC systems go, to help move the air and uh, control the moisture. Right, clean up day to day. They do have general maintenance responsibilities for the jail and have had them for some time, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we are attempting to address the situation with the jail. We are just the, the, the kitchen HVAC. That appears to be the priority, which we, this committee, has made several records to the board and they are moving on or following up on. So, okay. So uh, there is a motion to receive. Could we, I think given that, you know, it is a public document at this point, it's been received and we all work for the commissioners. I, I do think it's important that Dan makes this presentation to the board as well. So I would, uh, after receiving, like to make another motion. So there's a motion and a second to receive. Can we get a minute? Sorry, I'm just trying to. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I would make a motion that the HR Health and Safety uh, department at the earliest possible board meeting make this very same presentation, including the document. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Awesome. You can add it to the MC's meeting that will work. Done. All right. Uh, now let's go back to, if we could, item number six. Discuss and review and possible action regarding the conditions of employment at the jail. And I think this is uh, it's on by Dan. Stacey, have you had this on too? Or? No, no, it's just okay, so new Don presentation. More? <laughs> yeah. Um, do we have internet access on the. Um, if you have a laptop with you that we can pull you in. Uh, no. As far as like a presentation, like the screen in the other room, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> All right. So verbally, go for it. Yeah. Basically, the uh, the you don't have it on presentation that I I could probably pull it up this way. Right? <coughs> um, submitted pictures of um, many of the pipe systems within the jail. Um, they're in trouble. We're uh, looking at imminent flooding. Does that DB have airplane? I don't think so. Here it is on the hard wire. Every time that I use it, Um. hot water or steam that, that regulate, helps to regulate the temperature in the building um, are severely corroded um, as pieces of these pipes that can be flaked away with simple fingernail pressure. Um, they're located all the way throughout the facility. Um, from my discussions with the maintenance staff and anybody that has any uh, Experience with the facility states that if one of these goes, it's going to be a, a significant amount of water uh, that will be lost, that will seep from wherever that point is, a break down to the rest of the jail. Um, obviously, these being piping that is. Uh, tied into the temperature regulation of the facility is another 
possible source of not only leaks but but the mold that we're experiencing as well. So the intention of the report was simply to bring it in front of uh, the powers that be that uh, th th there is imminent uh, danger of some something like we experienced on the 27th of March where we had a large pipe that broke in the, in the kitchen. I mean, yeah. yeah. Would any kind of a failed pipe like that result in any more water flooding the facility than perhaps an inmate or groups of inmates stopping up toilets? Um, yes, sir, it would. Sorry to speak. No, no, go right. Yeah. I spent 10 years in England helping over the day tank system. Basically, our air units are old 80s, early 90s style radiators. They hold like 200 gallons a minute air flows through it. It's just radiator. Those, that water has a constant source of water. It's about a, about a five inch pipe, constantly flowing. It comes from uh, Viola, Trident, the hot water dust, goes over the gel. Runs up, cycle. I mean, it's constant. It's like <coughs> are so there shut offs though? And there are shut offs, but getting those shut offs can be a pain. Uh, we've had one radiator bust that I was up there, and it shut down the elevators. I mean, it was it was, it was a big mess. <coughs> so those by far would cause a whole lot more flooding than the inmates flooding out of the building. We have to reimburse the owners sometimes if we lose their water. <coughs> no, they've been generous enough with us. We're good enough customers that they they won't charge us for the water. And currently, we have the hot shut off because we don't need it this summer. Yeah. It's in the whole building, so those pipes are empty right now. And then nice we could have re replaced them more depressurized <laughs> if we didn't have the money. So when we uh, pressurize them again this fall, after they've been sitting all summer, Keith, okay. are they uh, are they steel pipes or are they cast? I believe they're cast iron. I can't remember for sure. But he's right on fingertip pressure. You can walk up one on your just I mean, it's got a gaping hole where the pipe is actually just splitting apart, coming apart in different layers. That's typically what you find in cast iron pipe uh, when it begins to deteriorate. Um, and usually for steam and fuel water, they'll use steel, which may appear different on the inside of the pipe than what you experience outside. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Have you I've seen the presentation? I've seen the exterior. Yeah, there's there's some yeah. pictures in here where water is actually leaking out. Oh, I'm sure. <coughs> through through cracks. <coughs> they okay. on some of the floors they've got uh, kitchen pans sitting underneath these pipes catching the water and they just come up here and yeah. dump it down the drain and then slide it back underneath and catch the water. Is that for chill water? <coughs> I do be honest with you, I don't remember. Okay. How much early should we pressure that system up in case we have a problem? Uh, we actually need to heat. If it's if it's as he suggests, and the integrity of the interior of the pipe is is questionable, we need to do this gently, a little at a time, and be prepared to make repairs as they become necessary. Is this one of those items that can be sleep? No. This is a cut out and replace. Yeah. Similar to the one that's leaking that he's referencing in the pictures that we've already cut out and replaced. We kind of had one that was towards the end there, it was badly leaking. We already repaired that. And so it's a It's such a small project. We paid a premium. It was $300 a linear foot to repair that. You don't want to keep paying that. You get a bigger project, you volume might even get the left one. Plus the price, I don't know how much it is. But. 
have, Stacy, can, have you guys been in and had formal discussions with anyone in the sheriff's office, their maintenance director, for instance, um, regarding this issue? I mean, I think it would be naive of us to assume that a 20-something-year-old building doesn't have problems. <coughs> we, we come to these meetings and we find out more and more in depth the nature of some of these issues, and then it's, oh, we need to address it, but this committee, and even the board, for that matter, doesn't have funding laying around to just throw at these types of issues because we need to develop a plan. So have you all had discussions? I know we've had a number of discussions with them regarding the kitchen, et cetera. Not formal discussions. Okay. Then that would seem to be uh, something that would need to occur so that within this district could report to the board at some time a plan of action. A plan of action. And <coughs> there may be some ability, I don't know, but in that discussion, as you're you know, obviously identified, most critical, and then if there is some time maybe now, how quickly could we move? And it sounds like it's going to be expensive, which may necessitate going out to bid. So the time is urgent. And I know you guys are busy on other things, but it, you know, it's that old deal of, well, here's our maintenance staff, here's another maintenance staff. And the one thing I think since we've all been together that has become apparent is there needs to be better communication and cooperation. So, um, is there a motion to receive Don's report? Second. All in favor? Aye. Now, a motion to instruct health, health and safety, engineering, and facilities maintenance to work with the sheriff's maintenance department to develop a plan of action, um, including cost guesstimates um, within the next, when do you want to back? We meet in two weeks, is that right, Matthew? <coughs> For the next regular meeting of the infrastructure committee, two meetings from now. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Number five is uh, discussion review and possible action regarding remediation of mold at the Oakland County Jail. Mm -hmm. um, Stacy, Dan, and who we have opened bids on the HVAC portion of that. Now that we have the uh, mold cleaned up, we got some good bids. Um, as you talked about guesstimates early, we set the 600,000 aside of the BET watch list. After we developed the plans, though, we had an engineer's estimate of 800,000. The low bidder is at 623. So that's good news. Uh, quality contractor. And then if we were to go ahead and uh, encumber the potential change orders, it's allowed statutes. It'd be 716,500. I recommend we go ahead and do that. So that's the kind of money we're looking for. And to move this forward and get this finished up, we really recommend that you uh, support the bid and help us find the money. And Cody's here since we don't have the ability to do anything. Mm -hmm. what, what, where are we at on, on this project? Is the BET? It's currently on the BET watch list at 500000 That's where it's at. Because initially the number that was going around was 400000 but that did not include duct work. And the ductwork was an absolute guess. Nobody had a clue. Um, so I don't recall who submitted it to BET at 500, but that's what it was. And that's what it currently is. So that's 623. Does that include the ductwork as well? Yeah. Okay. So we're really looking at 716 5 to cover all contingencies. Is what yeah. needs to be. Okay. And the bid's only good now for about 40 more days, so we need to move quickly on identifying money so we can award this for the contract. Uh, I know that in their special budget board meeting late this week. Mm -hmm. which yeah, the 29. Because I don't think you want to wait till the end of July. I don't have any time, more time as the budget board meets 
after Thursday until the end of July. Did they have an early July one to kick things off? Or? I'm sorry, did you see the bid amount of 765? No, but 7625. He said 15% for change orders and change orders. Change orders. Okay. I thought the change order was included. In the 7625, that includes potential change orders left by statute. Gotcha. What kind of time frame did they indicate? It's going to be about a five month project. Well, I we need to get started. Well, and I think this group is on record as saying that unfortunately we, we don't have the magic wand to give you the money or the board the money. Um, so we just enough time for more mold to potentially go up and have to be cleaned out again. That's my concern. Is there, other than to receive this, is there something that we need to do? Is there a recommendation that we can make? We can't. Can we make a recommendation to PBA or BG or Budget Board or? I hope you do all of that. <laughs> BET is not meeting prior to that. No. Um, so it was on the BET watch is on the BET watch list. I mean, I could, I could call a special, but I mean, I guess I mean, we could have a special on like Wednesday afternoon and we'll still be able to get the budget board agenda amended first thing <laughs> Thursday morning for the Friday morning meeting. Approach we all have bosses. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, is that kind of what you're suggesting? Just yeah. 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 shoot it every single way. <laughs> well, I the budget board meets Thursday. It's on the 29th. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's our first opportunity. Let's so the 20 that the 28th is the last day to amend that agenda, which means we would have, I guess if, if we call the special, I think, I think we're out of the, we're out of the window. Because even if we call the special budget board or special BET meeting now at 1030, we couldn't do it till Wednesday at 1030 which is after the 24 hour cutoff for the Thursday, 10 o'clock. Time out. Do we have, we don't have to go through BET. No, of course. No, 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 it can go straight on the budget board. But you would, you would recommend that it would go and be uh, kind of vetted in BET before it goes to the budget board, if possible. I mean, that's kind of to you guys. The question was just asked to me whether we could, but. We've already, I mean, it's been vetted on BET. You did discuss it pretty thoroughly, correct? Yeah, it has been discussed. Okay. So on the watch, is it BET session right now? No. Yeah, infrastructure. Go ahead. Well, let, let me ask. The, the new budget that will start on the 1st um, includes carryover. Correct. Which I, I assume would be last year's reserve. Yes, so if, the, if this item wasn't funded out of this year's money, it would roll over and we'll start a new watch, so BET watch list next month. The, the first is Saturday. The, the, when will there be a budget board meeting for the very first? Because uh, of the new year. The first one of the new fiscal year. The first is that, that on that Monday, yeah. the third? Yeah. It, for clarity's sake, it might be better to just try to do this out of the upcoming budget. The BET makeup, you would have time to meet and potentially develop a recommendation to the budget board and address this 
out of next year's money since it's all rolled over anyway. It might be cleaner sure. that way. So to make sure I understand, the next regularly scheduled DEC meeting is Monday, July 3rd. No, the budget board. board. The budget board. Board. So, the, so there's a budget board meeting on the 29th, on the 29th and then again on July 3rd. Yeah, I think the 29th is just the, in case you did a miscalculation for your 10 days or whatever you need to move money from one account to another. I think it's just kind of a housekeeping uh, budget board. The third is for the first fiscal. And this is such a large number that would have a fairly significant, since I'm, I'm sure most of it was calculated in the rollover. I, I mean, we'd have to have Danny or someone else to confirm that, but that would be my assumption. And so that makes sense because you, I mean, it's only four days after when they would meet, and that does give time for for BET to convene. If yeah, I, I could call a special BET meeting this afternoon. Okay. We could have it Wednesday. You could They could amend the budget board for Monday. They could amend that Friday morning. So as long as BET meets before 10 o'clock Friday morning, we could get it on. We could get a recommendation. Okay. If, if there is a recommendation, we could get it on. But Miles, you said that, I mean, it, you guys have already vetted it. Yeah, they have. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, it's that the BET is already vetted. It, it has been vetted, but it has never come to a, uh, a vote for a recommendation. Or an actual yeah. number, I would say. Yeah, we just we had a placeholder of 500,000, and this is, this is a... Okay, so it was placed on the watch list. And so how about this? How about motion to receive this report? And then I have a second motion. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Then the additional motion would be to instruct Stacy to make a presentation at the next BET meeting regarding the uh, project and the bid estimates and to uh, seek funding or a funding recommendation for, from BET to be presented at the budget board meeting at the beginning of the upcoming fiscal year. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Item number eight, discussion, review, and possible action regarding the Oklahoma County Annex building flood event that occurred Sunday, December 18th. Dan. The claim pretty well is closed out now. <coughs> um, the, the total loss from that claim was about $520,000. Um, we received $150,000 up front to handle the immediate needs that we had. Um, we have a $50,000 deductible, and we received a check this last week for just under $320,000 um, to complete the, uh, the claim. Uh, most of that will go for elevators. Um, the ongoing repairs and, and update of those that needs to occur after that flood. Um, the claim can be reopened if we need to, if we find other damage. Um, but as of right now, it's pretty well the number. So they will begin work when the uh, courts are in session in July and August so that we, uh, we don't interrupt anything too much. Mr. Chairman, and real quick, I know on the sixth floor on the digital side, the humidity level last week was uh, quite palpable. And I believe that is due to potential moisture in or under carpeting in particular areas that has yet to be addressed. Is there any plan for that to be addressed? And is there any contingency in this claim to cover any planned uh, replacement? Yes. Yes to which? <laughs> All of the above, the the humidity level uh, is a bit of a concern. When the um, testing group came through, tested beneath the carpet and in the walls, they determined that that after the event, that level of, of moisture uh, really wasn't a problem, uh, if I recall. We've got contractors in place, trim and uh, trim and tank people. And I believe for that specific area, we've uh, uh, got a plan in place to replace the carpet with tire on. All of that on the east side was, was most heavily affected. The, the claims number, the number is due in 
um, for, for the carpet and any trim replacement that needs to be done. Anything else? Move your seats. Mm -hmm. Motion to And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 9. New business. New business. Item 10. Citizens participation. Any citizen motion to address committee? Okay. Item 11. Board comments. Miles? No, yeah, thank you. Ready? Nothing for me? None for me. Item 12. Move to adjourn. <laughs> that was quick. Oh, man, I like that. No discussion. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone.